Hey guys, welcome back to week 50 of the MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled in MIT. So today I want to talk about a learning strategy that I've used through the bulk of the MIT challenge, which I find particularly effective if you need to learn something in a short amount of time. So it's called recursive learning. And I'm going to contrast it with the more typical sequential approach to learning. So when you learn something sequentially, Let's say that you have a course that is 10 units. That means that you master unit one before you move on to unit two. So you do everything in sequence. And there are some advantages to this, particularly if the concepts of unit nine really rely on the concepts of unit four, then if you've mastered unit four, it'll be a lot easier to understand unit nine. But one of the disadvantages of this is that you don't get to see the big picture of the course while you're actually learning the ideas. So if you're learning calculus, you might have to really master limits before you really understand why they matter at all to the process of learning derivatives or learning the actual uses of calculus. Using a recursive approach, in contrast, starts by going through the material in a way that you can understand it, but in a superficial way, and then recursively deepening your understanding on the ideas that you have the most difficulty with or the ideas that are most important. So the way I've been doing this in the MIT challenge is that I first cover the content from start to finish in a short period of time, trying to just get a, a general idea that I feel that I understand kind of what they're talking about. I, I'm able to follow it. It's not completely foreign to me. But at the same time, I don't have the deep understanding I would need to, let's say, pass the exams or even successfully execute a lot of the problem sets. It's from there that I'm able to deepen my understanding by doing practice questions and problem sets and using things like the Feynman technique and metaphors and visualizations to really hone down and form better and deeper representations of the ideas as I go through the classes. So this recursive strategy does have some weaknesses. Again, if you're doing a hard class, going from start to finish without actually really spending a lot of time to focus on some of the fundamentals can mean that maybe by the end of the unit, you're feeling really like you're not following anymore. So it does have that weakness. And I, I think that there's not a clear cut strategy where sequential is always better or recursive is always better. But I would say the two main advantages is that you get to see a big picture of the course. So you see how all the ideas fit together before you really master all the individual elements. And in, in addition, you also get the chance to focus on the areas that are most difficult and most important. And that's hard to know in advance if you haven't kind of gone through the entirety of the course and gotten a good lay of the land. So this recursive strategy is what I've been using for the MIT challenge. And if you are preparing for an exam and you don't have that much time or you're doing a self-study program, then it's worth considering because it allows you to cover a lot of material in a very efficient and lean way. So in other news, I'm beginning the last class of the MIT challenge. So I've been keeping this sort of a secret in the past. And this last class isn't actually an MIT class. It's a class taught by Cal Newport at Georgetown University, which is a graduate class in the theory of computation. And this is a class that I wanted to take in the MIT course curriculum. Unfortunately, complexity theory in those classes, I wasn't able to get final exams from. I wasn't able to get a lot of course material, so I wasn't able to do them with MIT. Now, I've been doing most of the classes through MIT just because I'm trying to stick as close as I can to the MIT curriculum benchmark. But if you're learning for things on your own and you're not trying to follow the strict constraints that I am, then you can learn from a lot of other schools other than MIT. So I chose MIT because it has a large library of courses, but Stanford does, Udemy does, other classes do, and you can really look way beyond the MIT Open Courseware to find a lot of really interesting classes. So don't let that limit you. Don't let it limit you that you have to focus on just one particular school. So I've started this class and I am going to be working through the problem sets for that and hopefully writing the exams for both machine vision and the theory of computation next week. And I'm going to be finishing up the final pro project for computer graphics. And once I've done that, I'll be finished the work for the MIT challenge. So thanks for following and I'll try to update you guys in the last two weeks of the MIT challenge. Thanks for following.